How you doing everybody? It's Joe here from Living to Learn. Um, I'm out here in Special Ops in Wicklow, in Roundwood. It's an outdoor adventure centre, so I apologise in advance for any noise you may hear in the background, but it's a it's a busy day out here. There's kids doing bushcraft and airsofters and paintballers and tanks, people driving tanks and it's a cool place, so just bear with me if there's any noise in the background. But I put up a post there um, last week about uh, the, this time of the year and budget kit, and I hate the nomenclature, budget. To me it's just kit. Some are more affordable, some are less affordable, some is more practical, some is less practical, but it's all kit at the end of the day. Um, I've been out a lot this week, it's been raining and I'm it's, my gear needs to be sorted out so I brought it out here with me today so while well, my son is inside running around to sort it out but I thought I'd show you in real time what I actually carry in my bag on a day to day basis when I'm out in the woods either shooting videos or just relaxing and having fun or a day like today I plan on maybe taking a quick hike up to Lockdown and the surrounding areas around here so I'll just start peeling my kit off out of my bag and um, you'll see hopefully that your kit doesn't have to be so super expensive. I only realized this the other day when I turned my eyes after a post about duct tape that I put up um, to my kit and the cost of my kit. I have some really nice equipment and I have some uh, equipment that I use kind of almost daily and I noticed that most of it was under 35 pound. So it can get you out in the woods and you can be comfortable and have fun. It doesn't have to break the bank. It's a stressful time for people this time of the year and the forums on the internet have become a place where people are not outdoor so much because of the weather it's pretty cold it's pretty rainy here in Ireland at the moment but they're starting to ask questions about pieces of kit that they may be deciding to treat themselves to for Christmas and there's so such a variety of budgets there and people are asking the right questions is it affordable is it practical do I have to maintain it and stuff like that so it's great to see uh, people trying to make themselves more aware because we all work hard for our dollars so I won't prattle on anymore the first thing you'll see here this is the Fial Raven Stubbin it's a great bag and would be considered a luxury item in my opinion, but a, a fantastic bag um, sent to me by Johan Skullman. It's a G1000 all leather on the outside and the cool thing about it, what I like most, is it's got a seat. So you can sit on it quite comfortably, I'm a heavy guy, and it supports my frame. It rides very comfortably on the back and it's a front loader. It's a great bag, but not a necessity when you're outdoors, but a nice one if, um, if, you're, feeling, <laughs> if you're feeling a bit flush. But straight off the bat, on the outside, I got my gloves. It doesn't have to be this particular brand of gloves. I was very lucky and the guys got me um, these for my birthday. But you can get yourself any deer skin gloves. For years I ran the uh, rubberized cotton backed kind of construction site affairs. Three for about ten dollars and they're a fantastic one but a good set of gloves you can't go wrong with in the outdoors. In the brains because of the time of the year that's in it I have some surefire methods. These are the you co me and Mark have been struggling <laughs> most of the week with the weather that's involved with bow drills and even just getting a fire started this time of the year can be pretty hard so it's always nice to carry something that gives you that instant gratification these are about ten dollars stateside they're a little more expensive in Europe but nice stocking filler and a great one to have in the bag then in the top I got my cutting tools or two cutting tools I have the Mora Eldris um, which is a nice one this is the one that I got at the Mora Adventure in Sweden last year. It's a great knife and will do for um, kids if they're, they're starting to learn knife skills or a bit of practice or joining the scouts. It's about 28 euro and it doesn't cost much at all. It's nice and light, especially if you're just backpacking, it's nice to have a cutting tool and if you're going to carry one, something about this size and weight is very nice. I have my Mora 511 in carbon. Great tool, and again under $10. does everything you need a, a knife to do. You're only starting off also a great one for kids who may be in scouts and stuff like that because it's got a pretty prominent uh, finger guard up here in the front nice one to have on the outside i carry a couple of carabiners these are the ddm uh, carabiners they're very very light it doesn't have to be this particular type of brand i used hardware store once for a long time it's just i was feeling a bit flush one week and they were having a sale and I decided to pick up a pair of these and I used these an awful lot when outside. The pocket on the right. I have an algae bottle. This one's still full of water from when I was out on uh, Thursday. But these are a great one. They're, they're solid. I carry 
one stainless, one plastic bottle for reasons I'll, I'll get into in another video. But they're nice and tough and light. And again, even if I'm going hiking, I'll do this. You see, I predominantly don't be just bushcrafting. I like to hike, I like to fish, I like to hunt. I like to do all the activities that the outdoors has to offer. And I'm not a man of means, I don't have a lot of money, so I have to think very carefully. So, I mean, if I'm going on a quick hike, um, I can just chuck two of these in my bag and away I go. That's all for that pocket. This pocket here, I have ABS 10 stakes. For a long time, I carried the MSR steel ultralight 10 pegs, and they're very expensive, but I found that they just didn't have the, you could hit some solid ground, some hard ground or whatever, and they can be pretty difficult. But these ones, I pick a pack of these up anytime I get a chance to see them. Most uh, like Halfords and B&Q and uh, Mr. Price and all these low budget dollar store kind of affairs, they have them. I didn't think they were as tough as they were going to be, but these are, these are going on a couple of years now and they're still going strong, but they're a fantastic one to have. Marilyn Spikes, or even Pitching Tarps, nice one. Weigh nothing, I actually say, I would argue that these are actually probably lighter than some of the ultralight stainless steel versions are titanium, titanium Spikes. I have my uh, generic Amazon titanium cup very cheap, they're everywhere on Amazon. This is the 12 ounce version. It's a nice one, perfect size for coffee. Weighs nothing at all, again, a nice hiking one or one for the fishing bag if you're going out. It's still filthy from during the week. I need to clean it. I always have a stainless steel bottle. This is the Pathfinder one. I had my last one for three years and I just really liked it. It's really robust, really tough, and they have a great customer service. But a stainless steel single wall bottle um, will do you out in the woods. That's, a, that's what I carry there. Again, fairly cheap for what it is. In the front pocket, I have uh, an orange bandana. Again, a couple of books and a great one to have for charring and everything else that bandanas are used for. I got a small first aid kit that I put together from the local pharmacy, um, mainly for to deal with cuts, so just some steri strips, etc. etc. The pouch was made for me by. Toby Hobby from Red Kite Leatherworks, um, but you can't can't go anywhere without a force aid pouch. And I have a pen. Getting on the inside of the bag. I got my poncho. This poncho is actually pretty expensive and probably the most expensive piece of kit I have. This is a Snoop Pack Patrol poncho. It's about 40 euro, 48 euro, depending on where you get it, but it is a very specialized poncho designed to fit over bags, it's ultra light. It's got thumb holes in the sleeves and a whole lot of extras. It doesn't have to be this poncho. Helicon and other brands make fantastic ponchos for less than 25 euro, and you can pick them up. But a poncho I found, I'm not gonna kneel on this, because the ground is a bit wet. A poncho I found is a fantastic resource outside, especially if you're doing multiple activities. Again, fishing, hunting, hiking. You can't really go wrong with a poncho. I made the switch when I was out hiking one time, and I had to keep taking my jacket off, jacket on, trousers on, trousers off when the intermittent showers were coming along and I kept, you, the last thing you want to do is be sweating, so walking in rain gear, which isn't the most breathable, was changing. So the poncho can go over my head, the poncho comes off my head and that still allows a bit of airflow. So not a lot, but more than most. This time of the year, I carry a microfiber towel and you see these everywhere. This one is just from a kind of a low end camping store here in Europe but it's absolutely huge. And the reason why I carry it more so is for kit maintenance. On a rainy day like today, if I'm using my knives or cups or tools, it's nice to put them away dry, save me a bit of time at home. But an invaluable resource. And, and again, cheap as chips, and it keeps, the, keeps your tools where they need to be. I have my hip pouch, which I won't get into the contents of because it's not that type of video, but there's a few bits in there, lighters, matches, fire steels, etc. I carry that on my hip and get a hip pouch anywhere. Again, this is another one made by Red Kite Leather works and it's got a magnet closing on the front of it, which I absolutely love. One of my favorite outdoors items is my grabber space blanket. Uh, my last one I used at the Pathfinder course and then I gave it to a, a, a student who was there along, alongside me who didn't, who didn't have one, his one was damaged, so I replaced it with a high-vis orange one. Great signal panel, fantastic cover, it's got grommets, so I used this for a tarp. 
Um, <laughs> there you go. Sometimes when I'm out, it'll be raining and I'll only have a, a single person shelter, so it's good to cover gear, it's a ground sheet, won't break the bank. And I mean, if you're pretty careful, you can you can pick up this and, and get yourself a, a Mora. And I mean, you're pretty much good to, to start tipping outdoors. It's, it's a nice setup and it won't break the bank. It can be a little expensive and a little hard to get in Europe, but they are available. A backhoe cutting saw. Um, this one is now going a year and a half old. I should really replace it. My last one I had for three years and I had to give it away. It was still cutting and still going strong. It had been stood on and trampled in mud. But a fantastic one in cheapest chips. And if you look carefully, um, Baco do have uh, sets of these where they would have a, a more a knife or a, 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 another combination of the two for less than 30 euro. You can get these two tools and they're a great one for the outside valuable resource. Use that more than nearly any tool I have. Next out of the inside, out of the heart of the bag, is my possible's pouch, as some like to call it. This is a waterproof rubberized uh, pouch made for people who go on boats. It's made by Stephen Henley in Pool Bay. This in and of itself is a fantastic piece because it fits in nearly all my bags. I can swap this stuff out for different trips if I want to put fishing gear, first aid gear, some hunting gear, maybe some lunch, some dinner, and it's able to sit perfectly into my backpack. It's got a grab handle here that was made for me at a UK gathering, and it's also got a grab handle here so you can just pull it straight out. Very easy and a very cheap option. Especially if you don't want to carry 101 dry bags, you just want to keep a few pairs of things safe. But even in here, in my possible's pouch, everything I use almost every time I'm out and Again, a very affordable option, but I have, you're gonna hear this a lot from me, but cordage. I've got um, number 36 bank line. I got a spoon carved for me by my brother in podcasting, uh, Pori Croak. I have my fire tin, which is a, a nice one that I was turned on to by Toby Hobby. It's just a tea caddy available on Amazon and a million to one places. It's got some surefire in the top of it, a la John Bishop. And it's also got this little hole in here, so it's a char tin and it carries my fire. I got some juke cord wrapped around the side of it with some ranger bands in here, some char cloth, and then I'm ready to go. A nice option and very packable. I prefer round objects when it comes to packing. I have a canvas pouch, which currently at this particular time has some cordage and some paper birch in it. Set three of these off Lee Robinson, cost me all of £11. They're a nice little touch, little for those who like a little vintage. Power cord, some scraps of bank line, more power cord, my eating utensils. These, these are a luxury item for me. I am, I'm not a big fan of the ultralight hiking stuff. One, they can be very expensive and they're very fiddly to eat with. And sometimes when you're outdoors, the weather and everything else can be against you. And the only kind of um, relaxation and good times that you can have is when you've got a bit of food on the go, get a bit of heat in the belly. So I carry a Primus set of utensils. These are actually still filthy from, from using them over the course of the week, but they're they're not too expensive compared to the ultralight options, but they're a nice replica of a vintage Scandinavian set that you would see around, and they're a full-size um, set of cutlery, and I like them. I have some repair tape. This used to be pretty hard to get, but it's available in most outdoor stores now and all over the internet, but I have some Gore-Tex patches in here and some tenacious tape, which will repair everything, because sometimes you're out, you're using some pretty specialized equipment like Gore-Tex and still nylon, and uh, having a means to repair that is, is, is it's nice to have. These will do tamarisks. I repaired my tent one time with them when hiking in Sweden, and it's a, it's a great one to have. MSR gas. A roll of jute available in packs of three from your local hardware store. Great one to have. Some, I think number six, I could be wrong, bank line on a sail needle. Uh, just, I use it as I don't build many nets when I'm outside, but it's just a handy way to keep cordage. And um, this one is just three sticks lashed together. It doesn't have to be big and fancy. Paracord. Paracord. A smaller roll of bank line. Again, just all scraps. Duct tape from my post earlier on in the week. I actually used my last one up so much, but this is a fantastic one. Great to have in the kit. And that's it for my, my possible pouch. 
this is my will do camp box I got this at the more night adventure last year and I wasn't sold on it I thought they were a bit gimmicky you know maybe meant for people who were out um, doing a bit more solo a bit more lightweight stuff than than what I would usually do but it's a fantastic little box and a great size and a great plate um, for when you need it and it's it, it, it doesn't weigh too much but if you're looking at a stainless steel option and this <laughs> this is going to be kind of gets stuck in my throat but Trangia do a fantastic one then um, it's a nice size stainless steel version great for a little bit of kit and you can also boil water in it for those who prefer a stainless option and it's only about 13 euro 14 dollars but in it I just have a few bits I have a gas stand which I got from I think it was Wish or somewhere like that Wish prices cost nothing but it's a very very nice one to have got a leather thumb stall this I don't carry so much it's, uh, it was given to me by Jamie Burley but I don't carry it too often for sewing I carry it for when I'm using my auger bits and stuff which can be pretty small and if you're doing some large projects you can wear in your hand but this one is a nice robust and tough one and I think it's great for that I have my little titanium cooker to go with my stand and my gas got this on eBay this is the Van Gogh one um, but they can be they're pretty pretty popular now and you can find them on various other sites like Aliexpress and Wish but very cheap very light kicks out an awful lot of good BTUs and I've had it a good couple of years used it almost daily and it's, it's still going strong a little birch bark container for my sugar which I carry myself and yeah, it's all that's in my box and it is, that is what I carry almost on a daily basis when out in the woods and shooting videos and everything else I find that um, I like to try and experiment with, with kit it's one of the best parts of what we do but I keep coming back to these old classics these old staples because they just work and they're very affordable for this time of year as well if you decide to go out I'd love to see what affordable bits of kit that you carry on a regular basis but I just thought I'd show this just to show um, that the outdoors is is accessible and you know I ain't a man of means and my, my kit is neither a kit of means but it does me and it does the job very well add a sleeping bag to it um, and, and you're good to go a good tarp if you fancy it I do spend an awful lot of money on my outer layers but that's another video for another time but when it comes to basic kit that's what I carry so I hope this maybe helps someone maybe fills a couple of stockings for Christmas if uh, people people were looking to treat that special someone in their life so here have a good weekend and it's Joe from Living the Learn out <laughs>